Today, I'm gonna break down how I do projection mapping for a TV show. Let's go. Welcome to the main event. Applying pressure, but I promise they ain't make it then. In their heads, living free. I ain't paying rent. Wake up in the AM making cheese like Mercedes Benz. Whoa, yeah. Please don't take offense. It isn't you, I'm just not interested in making friends. My biggest fear is finding out that this came and went. So go ahead, but I'm staying in. So this show was called Dr. Odyssey, and honestly, I had little to no details walking into this build. I was hired by a production company who already had all the gear and client, but just needed help bringing all the technical stuff and programming together so it all worked. And honestly, that's what I prefer to do. The company dropped off six projectors, computers, cabling, rigging, and power, and I worked with a union crew to get it all up and functioning. Once it was all hanging in the air, everyone pretty much left, and it was just up to me to program, map, align, and sync all the projectors so that we could get one continuous image across the tunnel. The goal was to make the tunnel look like it was underwater. Then the camera crew would use their TV magic to sell the gag to the audience that was watching. So let's get into the setup and programming. The projectors were Christie 14,000 lumen projectors with some zoom lenses. We ended up doing a test for the directors and client initially by mounting everything on scissor lifts. Once they were happy seeing the idea come to life with their own eyes, we then tore everything down and hung it from trussing in the ceiling so we weren't taking up floor space with the six different lifts. Yes, there were plenty of different ways to hang the projectors, both for the testing and for the temporary installation, but I didn't get to make any of those decisions on this one, that came from higher up the food chain. We could have hung some motors from the ceiling, then spanned some truss from the motors, attached the projectors, and lifted everything up that way on both sides. Instead, they decided to sit the trussing on top of the beams in the ceiling, and then drop long verlock cable down from that trussing to the four corners of the projectors in order to nail the exact angle we wanted because verlock is pretty easy to adjust and very strong. Having four points of contact also acted like a safety for each other because if one or two failed, the other two cables would be holding up the projector. I didn't hate the idea or how it was set up, and I am sure they had their reasons, but if we did it again, I would go with the chain motors for a quick up and down configuration, but there are pros and cons to both solutions, to be fair. For the computer to run all six projectors, we used a Mac Studio M1 Ultra with a Sonnet enclosure and two Blackmagic Decklink cards. These happen to be the 8K cards with mini SDI outs, but any Decklink with enough outputs would have worked. We ran three cables to each projector, one cable for power, one SDI for video signal from the deck link, and one ethernet cable to control all the functionality of the projector, like powering it on and off and controlling the lens and image setup. For software, we ran Mad Mapper, which you probably know is one of my favorite softwares at this point, for pretty much anything, not just projection mapping. A little trick I like to do is deploy a little wireless router I keep in my gig kit and attach it to the Mac Studio on the network. This allows me to pull out my battery-powered laptop and using the native Mac screen share functionality remote into the Mac Studio from my laptop, giving me complete control while walking around untethered. Now, this allowed me to hop onto the boom lift, drive myself around, and get high enough to the perfect angles to see everything while having my laptop right there to map and control from the top of the boom lift. First, I had to line up the projectors. I used the features of the tunnel as a guide and decided each projector needed to cover a certain section of the tunnel. If they happened to overlap, that would be okay, as I can fix that with Mad Mapper. Since the software to control the projectors is kind of older PC software, I decided to control them with their network protocols using BitFocus Companion. Not the ideal solution, but it worked and it gave me complete control. I adjusted the lens shift, left, right, up, down, the zoom in 
and out, and finally the focus. I also matched all the projector color and brightness settings. Once I had the projectors overshooting the area I wanted to map, I then clicked over to Mad Mapper and cut out the curves of the tunnel. I do all this by eye. First, I add a quad and put a nice bright color in it. Then I start to add some mesh wrapping to the output signal to alter the edges to line up with the side of the tunnel. I keep adding more and more mesh wrapping points until the straight lines start to look like a smooth curve. Basically, a smooth curve is really just a bunch of really tiny straight lines, all slightly different from each other, so as a group, it looks round in the bigger picture. Once I knocked out one projector and roughed in my programming pretty well, I would move on to the next projector, repeat the steps until all six were done. I then would go back and evaluate and fine tune the previous projectors, now seeing the image as a whole all coming together. I'd continue to find and fix some of the imperfections and load in the graphics I was given from the client while adding in some of my own additions at times just for fun. Run my test patterns to make sure everything is lined up, rotate the correct direction, and not getting any tearing in the video as the content moves between all the projectors. Once I was satisfied with my work, I took some videos, used Companion to remotely turn off all the projectors with a simple click of one button and prep the space for the crew and clients to come in the next day to see the final result. The production company had some other techs on site to make sure the systems and projectors were running properly day to day as I wasn't available for the shooting days. But I gave them some training, taught them how the system works and how to adjust things in case a projector physically shifts or whatever reason they might need it. It was cool to see my work on TV months later as as I randomly stumbled across it and seeing how good it looked in the actual TV show. Overall, everything worked out. I had fun with it, knocked it out quickly, and then it was on to my next show. Let me know if you have any questions or if you want to see more content on Mad Mapper or specific tutorials in the comments. Hopefully you found this helpful or useful, and with that, thanks for watching.